Hey, this is Dr. Nick from the ECG Academy with the first of many Chalk Talks that will help you become an ECG expert. It's easy. Just log on to ecgacademy.com for basic instructional videos, while these Chalk Talks will help you get used to reading the more complicated tracings. Anyway, let's start with this one. It's one that we see all the time in the telemetry unit. Nurses, doctors will often sit there wondering what it is, um, and I'll uh, talk you through it. So. Uh, first look at the forest. Uh, there are uh, three beats on the left side here uh, that are kind of slow, and then there's these uh, six beats on the right that are a lot faster. Well, if you look carefully at these beats, they kind of look like a normal beat. There's um, an upright P wave and a fairly normal PR interval of about 180 milliseconds. The QRS is a little bit wide. Um, there's probably a little bit of an interventricular conduction delay there, like a an incomplete right bundle branch block um, along those lines, and the T wave looks fairly narrow, nice and smooth. This beat looks exactly the same, and if we figure out the rate, let's start. It's about halfway between these two dark lines, so let's count off 300, 150, 100, 75, 60. And it's a little bit to the right of where this one lands, so I'd say it's probably 59 beats per minute if you want to be exact, maybe 58. Look at the next beat over, count it. 300, 150, 175, 60, and it's even further to the right. So I think 58 or 59 is perfect. And we would call this sinus bradycardia because it is less than 60 beats per minute and it looks like it's coming from the sinus node with upright P waves and these two leads. Remember, these two leads are going simultaneously so you can see the beats from a different angle. Okay, and then we get this weird kind of six beat run of something. It's fast. If you measure the rate, it's a little less than two boxes. So this is about 150 beats per minute. This may be 160, um, 165 or so. And then it slows down again. This is two big heavy boxes, so 300, 150. And this is a little slower. So it's a little irregular, averaging about 150 beats per minute. But the QRS complex is sort of wide and bizarre looking. It certainly doesn't look like the normally conducted beats. So let's figure out what it is. Well, most people realize if once you've read a bunch of EKGs that a wide complex tachycardia like this is either non-sustained ventricular tachycardia coming from the bottom chambers or some kind of atrial arrhythmia, atrial tachycardia or fibrillation, something like that, that is not following the normal conduction pathways in the heart, and it's what we call aberrant conduction. So it could be a supraventricular tachycardia with aberrant conduction, or it may be non-sustained ventricular tachycardia. So let's figure out which. And sometimes hard, but I think this uh, will become clear to you in a minute. Uh, the best way to figure out whether this is coming from the atrium or the ventricle is to look at how it starts. What you're looking to see is if there's a P wave that, that sets off this tachycardia, and if the PR interval is normal, then it's likely coming from the top chamber. Well, keep in mind that P waves tend to be a lot spikier looking than, than T waves, and in technical terms, the, uh, the, the frequency component of the electrical signal is much higher. In other words, the rate of change of voltage is much higher. The, sh the slope, let's just say, or the frequency content tends to be quicker than the T waves, which are m more slowly changing electrical signals with a lower frequency content. So what you're looking for is a sharp, spiky signal on the T waves. So if you see a T wave, that looks like this, or one that has a bite taken out of it like this, then chances are this high frequency signal is a P wave. So let's go back and look, uh, we'll pick a different color, and look at this normal T wave looks pretty smooth, and if you compare this T wave to it, it looks virtually the same. There's no high frequency jiggle or any bite or anything that looks like a P wave. Same thing here. This T wave looks pretty smooth compared with this one. And I would say, no, there's no P wave. Now, some people would argue, they'd say, well, what about this? Could this little bump be a P wave? Well, I'll tell you why it's not. 
If you look at the bottom lead, you can see that the QRS complex actually extends back to here just before the heavy line. That's part of the QRS complex. So if you look at this lead at the same time, you can see that this first bump, this initial bump, actually is part of the QRS complex. It just happens to be rather small in the beginning, what we call isoelectric. And so the QRS is wider than it seems, but that's not a P wave. Besides the PR interval, if you measured it, would only be maybe 100 milliseconds, which is way too short for it to be conducting. Okay, so where do we go from here? Well, let's assume this is a ventricular beat because it's wide and bizarre and there's no P in front of it. Well, what you need to notice is this signal right here. This signal, uh, which you can also see in this lead, is actually a retrograde P wave. How do we know that? Well, like I said, the T waves should be very smooth, and this sharp, spiky bite taken out of the T wave looks just like this. It's because this ventricular beat managed to get backwards up the AV node and back to the atrium, and the P wave is retrograde, meaning it's going in the opposite direction, and lo and behold, it's in the opposite direction of the normal P wave. That's what you'd expect in a retrograde P wave. Well, then what happens after that? You have this T wave and then another QRS complex, and then sure enough, there is another retrograde P wave. This time, the, the, uh, the interval between the QRS and the P wave, this, this sort of interval is a little bit longer than here, and that's because the AV node really in general doesn't conduct that well in a backwards direction. The next beat that comes in looks exactly the same, but now look, there's no retrograde P wave because the AV node failed to conduct this signal backwards. If you continue examining these QRS complexes, you see that there's a retrograde P wave following this beat, and then the retrograde P wave disappears again. Finally, with the last beat of the tachycardia, there's a retrograde P wave. So if we count the number of QRS complexes, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, and how many P waves are there? One, two, three, four. So what we have here is a condition known as AV dissociation. AV dissociation means that there are more ventricular beats than there are atrial beats. The ventricle is running the show. That means this is indeed non-sustained ventricular tachycardia with variable conduction back to the atrium. AV dissociation, in fact, is the hallmark of VTAC because basically tells you that the, the ventricle is running the show and the, the, the atria are lagging behind. So the final answer is sinus bradycardia with a six beat run of non-sustained ventricular tachycardia that you can recognize because you have retrograde P waves and uh, AV dissociation. Well, that's Rhythm Strip Chalk Talk number one. I hope that helped. Stay tuned for more video chalk talks and log on to ecgacademy.com if you want to become an ECG expert.